welcome to you all this morning, those of you who are in church and those of you watching online and those of you who may be watching later on, either today or whenever you decide to watch it on YouTube. <coughs> this is the fifth Sunday of Easter and we are especially privileged to have Dan Webb from um, the British Youth for Christ service here who's going to talk to us about what they do and to bring us God's word today. So good morning and thank you for coming. Please use the pew Bibles that are in the pews to follow the readings. And please wear your masks um, if you're able, especially when we sing. And if you're not wearing a mask when we sing, please can you socially distance so we make sure we keep each other safe still. So we'll begin. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Thank you. Our first hymn this morning has a lovely refrain. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Later on, we'll be reading Psalm 148, which speaks about praising the Lord. So let's start this service of praise by singing this with joy. Please stand if you're able. is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad of it. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
we have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So let's sit or kneel as we come to our time of confession. Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And in a moment of silence, we reflect on those things which we want to bring to our Heavenly Father. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you're kneeling, please sit, because we're going to have a look at our psalm this morning, which is Psalm 148. On page 632, Psalm 148, page 632, in the Pew Bibles, and I, on screen as well. And if you take a look at the words, praise occurs 13 times. It calls on the heavens, the angels, the sun and the moon, the stars, the animals, the men, women, children of all ages, as well as countless others to join the praise. Verses 1 to 6 call upon the heavenly realm to praise God. Verses 7 to 14 then calls on the earthly realm to join. 13 and 14 provide us with reasons to praise God. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praises of all his saints of Israel, the people close to his heart, and that's us. What is important to note is that none are excluded from the call to praise the Lord. And that's helpful for us to remember as we welcome new people into our church and into our lives. Everyone is welcomed by our God. So we'll read this antiphonally. Alternate verses, so if my start, uh, side starts with verse 1, then the left-hand side, verse 2, verse 3, my side, etc. And then everyone, with your loudest shout of praise, the last praise the Lord at the end of verse 14. And then together we will say the Gloria. So we'll begin this side, verse 1. So together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all nations, you 
princes and all rulers on earth. Then praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and heavens. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Thank you. So stay seated, please, as Margaret comes to read our first lesson. The first reading can be found on page 1105 of the Pew Bibles. It is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, starting at verse 1, on page 1105. The Apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. As when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers there chided him. They said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and you ate with them. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying And in a trance, I saw a vision, and I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by the four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked in it and saw four-footed animals, the earth, wild beasts, reptiles and birds, Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Something impure or unclean has never entered my mouth. The Lord spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from the Caesarea stopped in the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six men also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message that which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them, as it had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, If God gave them the same gift he gave us, who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, there was no farther objections and praised God, saying, 
So then, even to the Gentiles, God has passed the repentance that leads to life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we come to our next hymn. And it's a well-known hymn. And sometimes we can go through singing without looking and meaning at the words, especially when we know the hymn well. And oh, Jesus, I have promised, has lovely words, asking for Jesus to be with us forever, near us as our master and friend, not fearing what lies ahead, because he's with us, guiding us, and is just, that's all in just verse one. As we sing this, it would be lovely if we can really think about what we're singing and enjoy the words and mean them. Oh, Jesus, I have promised to serve thee to the end. Please stand to sing if you're able. for our second reading that John's going to read. (laughs) 
And our second reading is taken from John's Gospel, chapter 13, and beginning at verse 31. And you'll find this on page 1082 of the Bibles in the Pews. 1082. Now when Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My little children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Dan to come in and talk to us this morning. Let's check my great checking my microphone. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. It's really good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. Um, it's an early start for me because it was the first Sunday where I've gone to Kievel, St. Leonard's of Kievel first, and it was a fantastic time there. So thank you to Richard for the great welcome and it's great to be here with you as well. So my name's Dan, I am a lead worker for Wiltshire Youth for Christ. Um, I, I head British Youth for Christ, which is it's, it's actually a separate charity, surprisingly. So it's kind of like a, all kind of autonomous charities all over the country. Um, so I'm here kind of representing Wiltshire, Wiltshire Youth for Christ. I'm sure some of you have, has, have heard me before, met me before. So um, it's good to see you again. I've been working in this capacity now for eight years, and it's a privilege to work with young people. And when I say young people, I work with primarily 11 to 18 year olds in, in Trowbridge, but also in Bradford on Avon. My colleague Steve, uh, Steve Dewar, he works in the sort of devices area. We are a small charity, that's, that's effectively it. We have a lot of volunteers helping us. We've recently recruited a new director, uh, and we've also recently recruited another worker in Marlborough. So, there is a sense of growth, and I think we're in a season of growth, which is very exciting for us. Um, I think in the area of, of, of youth work, there's not a lot of provision for young people. I'm sure those of you who are teenagers will know that uh, in this area. So um, the work, it's very much a case of the workers, a few, but the harvest is really plentiful. There's loads of opportunity to work with young people. Um, so... As you can imagine, like a lot of ministries, working with people can be extremely fulfilling. It's, it's exciting to work with people, young people, seeing them grow, overcome personal challenge, to journey with them through, you know, maybe it's a journey of discipleship or just kind of survival. A lot of young people now uh, at the moment are just desperate for a sense of acceptance and love. Uh, it's always been the case, really, but I think at the moment especially there's a lot of anxiety and um, it's a challenging time for, for this generation of teenagers, of course. Uh, I think challenges come from everywhere, online, from their peers, from home life, from schools. Uh, it is, uh, I'm sure you'll know of some of those challenges yourselves. The reading in John 13 today uh, definitely resonated with me as I was coming to prepare and pray about what... Um, the Lord wanted me to share with you, because of course it's all about love, isn't it? John 13, verse 13, 
to uh, 35. And in this passage, Jesus gives us, a, or the disciples at the time, a new commandment, a new commandment to love one another. Uh, hands up, may I, may I ask you to put your hands up, if you think loving one another, in particular in the church community, is an easy thing to do. Hands up who thinks that's quite easy. You can put your hand up and that. Uh, yeah, it can be easy, can't it, I suppose, depending on who it is, I suppose. Um, of course, in this passage, if you look at the broader context, this is sort of this Jesus' teaching on love, loving one another, is sandwiched between the awkward moment when uh, Judas has betrayed Jesus and also kind of what follows is Peter's denial of Jesus and Peter goes on to predict that denial. So the fact that Jesus is able and willing to talk about love, loving one another within this troubling context for him is, is quite amazing really um, because he's in the thick of being, uh, being let down by his friends and his followers. I don't know about you, but betrayal and denial are probably quite high up on the list of bad things to happen in a friendship. Uh, maybe some of you have experienced those things. It can be very painful, can't it? So despite this, and maybe because of those challenges, I think it's crucial that we take a little bit of a closer look at what Jesus is teaching in this quite a simple passage about love in, in some ways. So there are kind of three takeaway bits I'd love for you to consider today um, from this passage. So the first is in verse 34, and Jesus simply says, this is a new commandment. This is a new commandment I give to you to love one another. And that's, of course, the opening challenge to the disciples then, and it's a challenge to us today. If you, of course, have a quick look to the left and right of you in this room, <laughs> uh, you'll know straight away, won't you, that we are diverse bunch. The church is made up of different people, maybe different ages, different political leanings, different interests and hobbies, um, different sports fans maybe, uh, a whole variety of people. And of course that's the way it's meant to be. Um, but I think that also means that there's an extra challenge because we're not necessarily all the so thinking the same things. And Jesus knew this and this is why he doesn't give us a, a polite suggestion to love one another. It's a commandment, isn't it? It's a command to love one another. And I think we need to pay attention when Jesus offers us a command to live our lives by. Okay, so he commands us to love one another, uh, and that's kind of an easy thing to hear. If we've been brought up in the church community, that's um, kind of a, a well-known thing. But what does it look like? What does this kind of love look like? Maybe I can just shake someone's hand when we offer another a sign of peace on a Sunday morning or wish them a really good week and that's kind of the extent of that love, quote unquote. I think loving one another can be very tricky and we do need some sort of example, don't we, for it to be modelled to us. And um, of course, Jesus does so. He does this uh, in verse, also in verse 34, he says, as I have loved you, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus' teaching on love differs a bit from the Old Testament uh, expression, the command to love one another, uh, which is about loving the Lord with one's heart, um, one, all one's powers, really, and, and loving one's neighbours as oneself. Because Jesus deepens and transforms that. He even goes as far as to say, of course, love your enemies as yourself. So the newness of that command, the disciples at that point heard didn't come from loving one another. They, they, they had a good grasp of an understanding of the importance of that. But it was Jesus' Jesus's modelling of that love that they would have had as a kind of a basis, a platform, to then grow the early church and love one another. And of course, the, the Gospels, as I'm sure many of us will know, are full of examples of this kind of love that Jesus brought. He brought peace to the disciples. He gently rebuked them. He healed them. He spent quality time with them. He took them on adventures together. He spoke truth and he involved them and empowered them. They ate together, didn't they? They prayed for one another. And the list goes on. And of course, this all culminates in the ultimate act of love that Jesus showed. Um, we celebrated that Easter. 
and that's him, him dying, laying down his life uh, intentionally for them and for the world as well. So in reality, based on the model that Jesus set us as his disciples, there's, kind of, there's no limit really to the love that we need to be showing to one another in this room. In our work with young people in Wiltshire for Christ, we have uh, just a helpful framework that we sort of have to consider when we, when we think of new projects, when we work with, with, with teenagers. Um, and we call it the four Ds. So we've got the first D, and some of you might have heard this before, but the first D is the, the demonstration of God's love, which is just quite simple, really. You've got this kind of acts of service. And, and we do that in our, our mentoring. We, we go into schools and we run sort of detached work, so that's kind of community work. Uh, my colleague Steve has got a, a van that he's sort of transformed into sort of a, a youth resource. It's got you know, hot, hot drinks machines in it and screens and things like that. And we take that around to different villages and just to give young people a bit of, a bit of hope and a bit of life in that moment. The second D um, is the declaration of the gospel. So, of course, we, we want to demonstrate God's love to them unconditionally. Uh, but we also want to show them what our motive is because it doesn't just come from nowhere. You know, it's obviously, as you can imagine, being a, a youth worker, it's, it's a sacrifice, you know, it's sort of... I have peers that are doing all sorts of jobs. I've got a friend who's just moved to Canada. He's working for Rolls Royce. Um, you know, <laughs> this is a choice, this is a vocation and a calling. And I think it's really important young people see that there is a there's an intentionality about the work that we do and why we're meeting with them. And of course, that for me is the love that I received from Jesus, um, and that has motivated me to to do the work that I do. The third D is the, well, helping young people to make a decision, a decision about following Jesus. And of course, that's an informed decision, and it's their choice. No one else can make that for them. But absolutely, we want to, I've seen Jesus move in my life. I've seen him change my situations. Uh, I wasn't brought up in a Christian family, uh, and I, I've seen Jesus totally change my family. And my, did, my dad did an alpha course when he was 18, when I was 18, when he was 18, uh, when I was 18, and uh, yeah, there's an incredible change in our family's life, and I've seen that, and I think it's important to give young people, even today, even with the challenge of ensuring that's done gently and sensitively, it's very important we give young people an opportunity to find Jesus themselves. And then finally, the fourth D is the discipleship journey we take young people on if they choose to, um, yeah, to do that. And of course, that's, a, as we know, a narrow path. It's full of challenge, especially being a teenager. Gosh, uh, there's so many uh, temptations, uh, different voices for them to, to almost stand up against, really, and decide to follow the narrow path that Jesus lays out. So the, the first part of this is uh, Jesus' new commandment, which is a commandment to love one another. The second part is Jesus modeling that to us that we have one less excuse not to love one another because we have a, a really good example in him and the final part uh, the final takeaway teaching point from this passage um, I believe today is that Jesus says by this love everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another by this love everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another so Jesus brings here to light the incredible fruit that comes from disciples loving one another with the kind of love that he's modelled. It's solid evidence, maybe even proof, to the world around us with all its topsy-turvy morals and hypocrisy and um, fear-mongering, maybe, that we are followers of the Son of God, that the institution of the church and the community of the church is separate from anything else. It's separate from schools and it's separate from politics. And it's a very important reminder, isn't it, to us that, that we are to be known for our love for one another. And, and this is direct from Jesus' mouth, really. So the, the demonstration of Jesus' love, I would say, is transformative. You know, I can say that personally. I said about my family. But... Um, 
in recent months I've been in secondary schools and our consistent presence in those schools has generated some interesting conversations. Of course, we see staff members, as well. Wiltshire Youth for Christ, that's an incredibly politically incorrect name. <laughs> it's, you know, please, tell us more, you know, what's going on? How, are you Christians? And of course, I was able to say, yeah, I'm a, I'm a practicing Christian. And, uh, you know, in a conversation with one member of staff, sort of, she was saying, well, how do you have a faith? How do you, it's 2022, how do you have a faith today? How, how does that work? Is it compatible? Um, it was a very honest question, and she caught me off guard. But uh, it was a great opportunity just to share a bit of my story and my, and my history with her. So I want to provide a gentle challenge to you folks today as well, based on, on this. Um, just to ask a question to begin with. Do you find it more, do you find more reasons not to love brothers and sisters within the church community than to love them? And I appreciate that there's the world out there, there's people who aren't Christians, but Jesus was commanding us to love one another within our church communities, and that's the emphasis really today uh, for us. I invite you just for a few moments, if you will, just to, to close your eyes and maybe think about the people in this room. St. James Church Community. Maybe even Father God is putting someone specific in your mind right now as, as I speak. And as you think about that person, maybe it's someone that you've uh, been connected with for a long time, many years. Maybe it's someone that's annoyed you recently. Let's face it, that does happen. <laughs> what could you, what could you do, maybe should you do today to live out Jesus' command to love them. What might this look like? Could you do this today? Could you and will you extend that love to them in a greater way today? And I'll just close with a prayer. Jesus, thank you that you are intimately knowledgeable about our capacity and our ability to love each other. You know when it comes easily to us, but you also know when it's difficult for us as well. Please, by your Holy Spirit, help us to love each other, to love each other as you have loved others. Help us to love sacrificially and out of the overflow of our deep under, deeper understanding of your costly love for us. And we ask this for the sake of your kingdom because there's a world out there that needs your love. So help us be known for that love in your church. Amen. Thank you so much, Dan. Um, Jesus' simplest command, yet also one of the hardest, isn't it? Thank you for making us think. Are you going to be around after the service? Lovely. So, while we, oh, presume, are we having coffee this morning or not? Yeah. yeah. So, while we're having coffee this morning, if anybody's got any questions, is that okay? We're going to see Dan afterwards. So, but thank you for, for talking to us about what you do and. Um, it's absolutely fantastic that the, the children and the young people have somewhere they can go safe to, to share. So, thank you. So we come to our third hymn, and in fact, it echoes on from that, um, a new commandment, and it echoes our readings, what Dan has said to us, to love one another just as God loves us. So if you're able, please stand to sing.
standing for our creed, and the words are on the screen. Together we say, We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So please sit or kneel as Barbara comes to lead our intercessions. Shall we pray together? Heavenly Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we thank you that we can bring all our prayers and petitions to you with the assurance that you hear us and answer our prayers in accordance with your will and purposes. We thank you for the freedom we still have to meet together publicly to worship you, to speak about you and to share your love, hope and peace with one another and with those we meet day by day. With sensitivity about our own freedom, we raise to you, Lord, the Christians across the world who do not have this freedom, but because of unjust persecution, Pay the high cost of following you. We ask, Lord, that you would help each of us to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, and to fulfill the new commandment that the Lord Jesus gave of loving one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, Lord, for the work of Christian Aid, which, together with international partners, is striving to restore justice to the world. We pray for the millions of lives that are at risk because of the long-term effects of COVID, military and tribal conflicts, and the accelerating climate crisis, and ask that families will stay strong during times of severe weather events when their homes and livelihoods are lost. We pray too that governments with the support of relief agencies will be more proactive about tackling the climate emergency. We give you thanks, Lord, for the Trowbridge Christian Aid Committee and pray that the market and coffee morning next Saturday in the church hall will be both successful and honouring to you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for our nation, for guidance and wisdom for the government, members of parliament and our local government, that in their decision making, they will be active in addressing the increasing household costs. We pray too for a workable resolution to the protocol problems for Northern Ireland. We ask, Lord, for clarity of vision and action, both nationally and locally, to provide practical help and hospitality to the Ukrainians fleeing their war-torn country, and for an end to the invasion with a clear withdrawal of the Russian forces. We pray too for forgiveness, for healing and reconciliation in Eastern Europe and in Russia. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Lord, we lift to you now the young people in our town, many of whom have assessments, GCSE and A-level exams. We pray for their teachers and their families, that you would give them hope encouragement and strength as they guide and support their young people 
through this stressful time. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry of Youth for Christ in our schools and for Dan coming to speak to us this morning. We ask that you continue to give Dan and his team guidance and wisdom as they bring your message of love, grace and hope in the Lord Jesus to young people and for your protection of Christians in our schools and workplaces. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father God, we give you great thanks for Her Majesty the Queen, for her faith in you and her service to this nation and the Commonwealth. We ask for your help with her mobility problems and for wisdom on what events to attend during her Platinum Jubilee celebrations. Lord, there are many people in our wider church family who are experiencing mental and physical health difficulties, loneliness, sadness, and loss. And from our hearts and our minds, in a moment of quiet, we want to bring them to you now, Lord. Father, we ask that you would meet each person that we've named before you with your love, with your peace, your hope and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving Lord, we have so much to thank you for in our church community. We are indeed blessed through the ministries of Richard and Tom, and we thank you for the help we've had from visiting ministers and speakers. We pray now for Jake and Nicola with Zanna, Libby and Jess as they prepare for their move to Trowbridge in August, and for Jake's ministry as our next incumbent. We pray that you will keep them safely in the hollow of your hand during this time of preparation. We bring to you our PCC meeting on Tuesday and for your leading in our discussions and decisions that all will be in accordance with your will and to your honour and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Christian Aid states that with every gift, every action, every prayer, every one of us can change lives. May this be reflected in our lives as we obey Jesus' commandment to love one another as he encouraged and asked us to do. Merciful Father, accept Amen. these prayers for the sake of our Saviour. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the collect for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us courage and com give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. 
And now it's time for famine news, so I think we'll start with the bands which Richard's going to read for us. Good morning, it's a pleasure again to uh, read the bands of marriage. And I published the bands of marriage between Gary Adrian Cleverly and Amanda Jane Westlake, both of this parish. This is for the third time of asking. And also between Benjamin Dennis Holstead and Laura Elizabeth Pratt, both of the parish of North Bradley. And this is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not respectively marry each other, you are to declare it. And so we pray for them. Heavenly Father, we bring to you Gary and Amanda and Benjamin and Laura as they prepare for their marriages. And we pray that they will grow closer to each other in love and deeper into your fatherhood and love in the years to come. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, firstly, I'm sure you would like me to thank Dan for coming to speak to us this morning. It's good to have you again. I think it's a few years ago that you came to speak. Um, was it yesterday? I know that, <laughs> but, it was, but it's really good to have um, have you with us this morning. Dan mentioned one of his colleagues, um, Steve Duar. I think some of you probably have met Steve um, in the past because he used to be in Trowbridge at one time. And one of the things that Steve did a couple of years ago, two or three years ago now, was as part of his work, he developed a community garden in Pottern. And that was featured on Gardener's World. In fact, it was featured twice on Gardener's World. So that's, um, you know, there are just many facets to the work that you do. So thank you, Dan, for joining us this morning. I'd like to ask Richard Westwood to come. Richard wants to share a few things with us about um, St. James's Trust and a few needs. So, good morning. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, St. James Trust are in the process of um, selling some land, the last of our fields. And uh, we've been seeking some sort of help from solicitors to go over a few bits of paper and that. And uh, we had a quote, which was a bit eye-watering. I won't say what I said when I read it, because I'm in a church. But it's that, that famous line on the movies when someone says, is there a doctor in the house? Or is there a solicitor in the house? Is there somebody that could... Um, just help us go through a few papers just to see if we're going on the right track. It's, um, it would be very helpful to the trust if someone could just, if they know of someone, to pass me to someone and speak to me later. Thank you very much. So, Christian Aid Week starts um, this week, and um, in the church hall on Saturday morning, from 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock, there will be a Christian Aid market and coffee morning, so all are welcome to go along and join that. And Francis also will have some flowers to give out to people at the end of the service about um, Christian Aid, the Christian Aid um, activity this coming week. We've also left the blue envelopes um, in the pews all money put in the blue envelopes will go to um, go to Christian Aid um, up until the end of May, and then we support a different charity um, tier fund during June, July, and August. Our newsletter is a two-week edition, so it's the same edition as last week. So there will be a new one next week. Um, there are still quite a few gaps on the coffee corner rotor. If you'd like to have a look in the corner, um, by the coffee corner, the rotors are there. Um, if people are, would like to volunteer for this, it's a really worthwhile ministry, people coming into church, welcoming them, and it leads to all sorts of conversations, very useful conversations. So please do have a look at the rotor to see if you like, are able to help with filling any of the gaps. 
And we will be introducing again 11 o'clock prayers um, when we're open on, a, a, on the Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. We did this regularly up until the beginning of the pandemic, and then, of course, everything stopped. So I think it would be good. And people appreciated that time, just that two or three minutes, just to stop, to pray, and to share the Lord's Prayer together as well. Um, Phil's service will be in church on Wednesday, the 25th of May, at 12 o'clock, followed by... Um, a reception in the hall and George Offler's service will be on the 24th of May at 2.30 in the Krems so please do keep um, Kath and her family and Jenny Offler and her family in our hearts and our prayers at the moment. We have um, further copies of the prayer diaries. If you didn't have a copy last week we do have some more prayer diaries to to give out which John has got and also a, couple, a few more copies of the Men United information which um, is also a good read. Tuesday evening this week we have our church council meeting at 7.30 here in church and so we would welcome your prayers for that. Um, it's usually the first meeting um, after the annual meeting is always slightly longer because we have a responsibility to review all our policies and um, obviously we have our general business to discuss and decisions to be made and so do hold that meeting please in your hearts and prayers 7.30 on Tuesday. Also if you're not a member of the PCC and would like to go to a meeting there is a meeting at Bethesda Church at 7.30 and it's called a Christian exploration of creation and climate issues, which um, is being organised by members of CATA and the minister of uh, Wesley Road Methodist Church. Tracy is her first name. I'm sorry, I can't remember her surname at this moment. An advance notice on the 2nd of July at 4 o'clock in Salisbury Cathedral, Holly will be ordained um, as a priest. So she will, uh, once she is ordained, she will be able to take the full um, services like Holy Communion and um, weddings and so forth. So that's Holly's very special service. Of course, with the pandemic, we weren't able to go to either Katie's ordination or to Holly's ordination. So she has asked us to... Um, to say that um, there don't seem to be any restrictions about seats, so if people want to go, she would, I know, appreciate the support. That's July the 2nd, 4 o'clock in the cathedral. Next Sunday, um, our, we have breakfast church at quarter to nine in the hall, and then a benefice, joint benefice service of Holy Communion here in St. James's, which Richard will be preaching and presiding at, and it will be good to welcome our, um, our brothers and sisters from Keeble. So it's a joint service next Sunday. I haven't anything further to add unless anybody else has. Thank you. I'll hand back to Helen. Thank you. So we come to our final hymn. And I have to confess, um, I've been singing since I was eight, eight years old. I've been in the choir since I was eight, and I have never heard of this hymn before. <laughs> <coughs> so I had to look it up. Um, but in this hymn, we sing that we're not ashamed of our faith. We trust in God. We trust in his promises that in the end, when we take our final breath, we will be accepted into the new Jerusalem and what a wonderful journey being a Christian is, and what a wonderful destination we have to look forward to. So we stand, if we're able, to sing.
for uh, God's blessing upon us. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen us to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of